Yeah. All right. So uh, this is joint work with uh, Troy Lee and Ronald Wolf, and it's work on quantum speedups for graph sparsification, graph cut problems, and Laplacian solving. So to settle the field a little bit, uh, the graph model in which most of the talk uh, takes place is uh, the following. We consider undirected weighted graphs G, where we have nodes at V, edge set E, and non-negative weights W. We'll assume uh, the, the graph has n nodes and m edges. So m here is at most O of n squared. And we have query access to the graph through its adjacency list, right, which you can think of as a, a list of n rows, where every row contains um, a pointer to the first neighbor of v1 with the corresponding edge weight, which would be w12, the second neighbor, etc. So it's sort of sparse access to the graph. So in this graph model, we study the problem of graph sparsification. So what's graph sparsification? Given as an input a general graph G, which can have a number of edges M of G, which can be up to as large as N squared, uh, we want to construct a, a, a sparser graph H, which has a number of edges MH much smaller than MG so that um, we basically preserve certain interesting quantities, right? Because trivially, we could just throw away all the edges of G, but we actually want to preserve certain interesting quantities of G. This is what we call sparsification. Now, what are interesting quantities? This really depends. Um, in the paradigm of spectral sparsification, we are interested in approximately preserving all quadratic forms associated to the graph. So what do I mean by this? A, Quadratic form associated to the graph is defined through the graph Laplacian. So this is LG, which is a linear algebraic characterization of the graph. And a quadratic form looks somewhat like this. And what we want is um, we want to basically approximate these quadratic forms. So we want to find a graph H, which is sparser, so that it's Laplacian. The quadratic forms in the Laplacian basically epsilon approximate the quadratic forms in the original Laplacian. And we want that this holds for all x. So why these quadratic forms? Basically, because they capture a lot of the structure of the graph. Uh, they capture things like cut values, but also eigenvalues of the Laplacians, um, random walk properties, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really kind of a, a very nice notion. So of course, um, it captures a lot of things. We want to preserve these things, but can we actually significantly sparsify while preserving so many things? As it turns out, we, we actually can. Uh, so through a long line of work uh, by Karger, Benzer, Karger, Spielmann, Tang, Batson, Spielmann, Srivastava, uh, the following theorem was established. So for every graph, there exists an epsilon spectral sparsifier H, which has a number of edges, which is only O tilde n over epsilon squared. So I'm using O tilde to uh, hide polylog factors. And if epsilon is, 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 is a small number, but a constant number, then this is basically uh, linear in the number of nodes, right? So compare this with the number of edges that the original graph can have, which, which is up to n squared. And not only does it exist, this uh, very sparse spectral sparsifier, but it can actually be found in time near linear in the input size. So that's really a terrific line of work. Uh, and it has many, many applications, right? So it's a building block of many uh, near linear time approximation algorithms for graph problems, but also problems outside of graph theory, like machine learning problems. Uh, and it is a crucial component of the breakthrough work by Spielmann and Tang on solving Laplacian systems, which basically correspond to a linear system, AX equals B, where A is a Laplacian matrix, which is kind of a specially structured matrix. And these are special because basically any Laplacian can be associated to a graph and Spielmann and Tang are able to use these graph theoretic notions to solve these Laplacian systems in time O tilde M, which is near linear in the input size. So what did we do? Uh, we started from this great line of work and we tried to add a little bit. So what we do is we uh, considered quantum algorithms for constructing spectral sparsifiers. So what we show is that in uh, query and time complexity, O tilde square root MN over epsilon, we can actually explicitly construct this epsilon spectral sparsifier H. Maybe I'll just say something small about this epsilon factor. So our um, complexity is square root MN over epsilon, and the classical complexity is scales as M, 
and the sort of output size scales as n over epsilon squared. So basically, there's a limited regime where sparsification makes sense, right? So, um, so we actually require that epsilon is not larger than square root m over n. And in this precise regime, we always get a, get a speed up, right? So we get this extra epsilon dependency with respect to the classical algorithm. Um, but um, nevertheless, we always improve on the classical algorithm. Uh, and in fact, we also show that this is tight up to polylog factors. So, so there's no way of improving this. Uh, this quantum algorithm gives a sort of vanilla speed up for a range of problems uh, in cut approximation and Laplacian solving, which I'll talk about later. Um, and by putting a little more work, um, this is the second uh, basically part of, 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 this, of this work, uh, we show that we can actually find quantum algorithms not just for cut approximation, but even for finding exact uh, solving, for exactly solving cut problems. So I'll start by talking about this uh, quantum algorithm here. And to do so, I'll introduce a classical sparsification algorithm that we based our approach on. This is an iterative sparsification algorithm by Kutis and Zhu from 16. And it basically goes as follows. So consider it as an input graph, uh, this graph G. They start by constructing a near constant number of graph spanners. So what are graph spanners? You can really think about graph spanners as sort of more refined uh, spanning trees, right? So you can imagine that it looks a bit like this. So we have this sort of very sparse subgraph. And what we do is we use these spanners to identify the important edges of the graph, right? Because what you see is, um, again, you can just think about a spanning tree. A spanning tree will necessarily include this edge here, which is, which is kind of a crucial edge for the graph, whereas these edge are slightly more redundant. And so we see that a graph spanner will identify these important edges. And so what we do is we keep these spanner edges and the remaining edges are necessarily less important in some sense. You can actually downsample them with uh, probability one half, and then we'll double their weight to basically keep the expected weight of every edge uh, constant. And this is an approach of bringing down a graph which has m edges to m over two edges. And Kutsensu proved that uh, this will be an epsilon spectral sparsifier of the original graph. And so what you can do now is if you repeat this order log n times, we basically keep on having the number of edges and we'll end up with an epsilon spectral sparsifier, which has O tilde n over epsilon squared edges. So what do we add to this? Um, so again, consider the sort of sparsification scheme by, by Kutsis and Zhu. First, we construct a faster quantum algorithm for constructing this red sparse subgraph, right? The spanner, uh, which is complexity square root mn and is built on work by Toro Penswick and Juri Heiligman, Hoyer and Mala. And this seems like the most of the work, but but it, it it's not quite that simple, right? So classically, once we have this red graph, we just iterate over all the remaining edges and toss a coin for every edge and just keep one edge with some probability and keep the others uh, not. Uh, but quantumly, we can't do this because we want to um, solve this problem in sublinear time, and so we cannot afford to explicitly iterate over all the edges. So instead, what we do is we use a k-independent oracle, which simulates access to a k-wise independent random string, which basically serves to implicitly downsample the edges. So we'll basically have this data structure, which we can, we can query and which associates uh, a k-wise independent random number to every edge, random zero or one, and it implicitly downsamples the, the edges. So we will not explicitly construct this graph, but only implicitly. In the very end, when you only have few edges left, right, where all these guys have still have value one, we'll use a Grover's search to find the remaining edges, which are just n of epsilon squared edges. This buys us a quantum algorithm with complexity square root mn over epsilon squared, which is not quite what we promised because uh, we promised a epsilon dependency. Uh, so we use another bootstrap trick, which is kind of nice. So what we do is first we construct a rough sparsifier for constant epsilon. This takes time only square root mn. And then we improve on this epsilon dependency by using this rough sparsifier to actually get a better sparsifier, to, to sample a better sparsifier um, in the original graph. And this builds on work by Spielman and Srivastava from 08. And this buys as a square root mn over epsilon quantum algorithm. This proves the following theorem. There is a quantum algorithm that explicitly constructs an epsilon spectral sparsifier 
with O tilde n over epsilon squared edges and time O tilde square root mn over epsilon. So this is a quantum speed up over the classical uh, runtime. Then this is bound on both the time and query complexity. And we proved that even just in, in terms of query complexity, this is tight up to polylog factors. So how do we prove this matching lower bound? The intuition is kind of easy. Um, if you want to find k marked elements among capital M elements, then this by, by the quantum search lower bound takes square root mk quantum queries. Uh, and this is tied by Grover search. Hence, and I'll put this between quotes, hence finding the n over epsilon squared edges of a sparsifier among the m edge of the original graph in a sort of in a query model should take square root mn over epsilon quantum queries, basically by the same argument. But of course, this hence is hiding quite a couple of things. Uh, the lower bound turns out to be quite involved. Uh, its main components are a unsparsifiable graph construction by Andoni, Chen, Kraut, Kamerkin, Woodruff, and Zhang from 16, uh, which is basically a graph so that any sparsifier should contain a constant fraction of the edges of this graph. And we hide this graph in a much larger graph uh, so that basically any sparsifier of the larger graph should output a constant fraction of the edges of this unsparsifiable graph. So we effectively hide a bunch of edges and we have to find a constant fraction of these. Since you have to find only a constant fraction, it can be any fraction, this defines a relational problem. And we have to build on a quantum lower bound for relational problems by Belov and Lee, which they proved um, after we, basically after we asked them about this problem. So this is the intuition for the, for the lower bound. Now, uh, I promised a bunch of vanilla applications from this. For instance, consider the problem of min cut, where we have an, an, an input graph and we want to find a cut which basically cuts the graph in two, in two components, say S and S complement. And we want to minimize the total weight of edges that are crossed. So if this is an unweighted graph, then we just have one, two, three, four edges. And so the cut value is four. And this would effectively be the minimum cut in this graph. So finding this problem is, is sort of a canonical problem combinatorial optimization. And we can use the following nice observation, which is that if uh, H is an epsilon spectral sparsifier of G, then um, we know that all the cuts in H epsilon approximate those in G, and hence the min cut of H should be an epsilon approximation of the min cut in G. So basically it suffices if we just care about an epsilon approximation to solve the problem on H, where and where this guy has order n squared edges, the guy has only something like o tilde n over epsilon squared edges, which is much sparser and makes the problem actually easier to solve. This is what Karger's algorithm um, uh, relies on. And in the end, he's a bit smarter. Like he, do he doesn't just find an epsilon approximation, but he actually finds the exact min cut by putting some more work at the end. We, on the, on the other hand, we start off by, by being a bit lazy. And we say, like, um, if we just use our quantum algorithm to construct the sparsifier H, this takes time square root mn over epsilon. And then we just run a, right? So this is square root mn over epsilon. And then we just use a classical algorithm to find the min cut here. This only takes time n over epsilon squared. And so in total, this gives us a o tilde square root mn over epsilon quantum algorithm for finding an epsilon approximation of the minimum cut of a general weighted graph. And this actually describes a general blueprint for, for, uh, for applications, right? We use a quantum algorithm to construct a sparsifier, and then we run a classical algorithm on the sparsified graph. This gives us O tilde square root mn over epsilon time quantum algorithms for epsilon approximating problems such as um, not only min cut, but also max cut, sparsus cut, and a bunch, uh, a bunch of other uh, cut approximation problems, uh, but also for solving Laplacian systems because these, uh, this H that we construct is a spectral sparsifier. So, so it kind of preserves quantities which are related to the uh, Laplacian. And we can actually show that, um, consider the following problem. Uh, we want to solve a Laplacian system LGX equals B, where we're given sparse access to LG. And we want to find epsilon approximation of the solution. Then we can basically do the following. We can just construct a sparsifier and then use the fact that a solution to this system will be approximated by a solution to the sparsified system. And this should be, again, much easier to solve because you can use Spielmann-Tang's near linear time uh, approximation algorithm. 
And Laplacian systems solving has a lot of application in combinatorial optimization and machine learning, etc. And so for all these applications, we find this O tilde square root m n over epsilon time quantum algorithm. So that's all nice. And like I said, these speeders were kind of vanilla. Um, but can we actually, by putting in a bit more work, can we get exact quantum algorithms? Like for instance, if we go back to the problem of min cut, um, I, I already mentioned that Karger's algorithm finds the exact min cut in time O tilde m. Whereas quantumly, uh, we do get a speed up, but we, but we only get an epsilon approximate min cut. Uh, and, and we'd actually like to get an, an exact min cut. So we dived into this problem a bit more, and we have a bunch of results here. Uh, they separate between the JCNC list model and JCNC matrix model. So I'll just clarify the JCNC list model is uh, what I described before, where the input size is, um, is basically M, the size of the graph. Um, on the other hand, in the JCNC matrix model, the input size is N squared. We're basically given query access to the JCNC matrix, and we can make queries of the form, do I and J have an edge between them or not? So in these two, two different models, the first result is actually um, uh, independent of the model. It shows that there exists a family of weighted graphs, then, which are dense, which have omega n squared edges, so that the quantum query complexity of finding the exact min cut is omega n squared. So there's no quantum speed up. Whereas before we show that we can actually get a, get a quantum speed up for epsilon approximating the min cut in any weighted graph. But it seems that for finding the exact min cut, we cannot find a quantum speed up. And uh, the intuition behind this result is basically that in weighted graphs, we can really cheat, cheat a little bit and, and many edges can take part in the min cut. Uh, basically, we can, we can kind of encode a problem so that the minimum cut of, of the graph should uh, actually output the sum of n squared values and, and something like n squared edge weights. And it's easy to prove a quantum lower bound for that. That's kind of the intuition. But luckily, there's also good news because for unweighted graphs, this does not hold. And, and I'll come back to that in a, in a second. First, the results. So for unweighted graphs, we show that exact min cut has quantum query complexity, square root mn in the adjacency list model and m to the three halves in the adjacency matrix model. Uh, and actually, uh, we find time complexity uh, until the n to the three halves in both models as well. So these algorithms are uh, time efficient as well. Um, this here, this bound, this strictly improves on the former uh, approximation algorithm that we had, because that one had uh, square root mn over epsilon complexity for epsilon approximating the min cut, whereas now we find it exactly. There's also lower bounds for the unweighted case. Uh, so they kind of complement the lower bounds for the weighted case here, which is omega n in the list model. So if we compare these two, then we see that there's still some work to be done, right? There's a gap here. Uh, whereas in the matrix model, up to polylog factors are upper bound, both on the query and time complexity is tight. Some intuition on the quantum query complexity upper bounds. Uh, are, they, they basically stem from a very nice uh, bunch of results by Kawabayashi Tora from 14 and Rubinstein from Weinberg from 17, who show that for an unweighted graph G, there exists a partition P1 to PK, and I'll perhaps try to draw it a little bit, um, sort of partition like this, into, um, in this case, we would have four partitions P1 to PK, so that between the partitions, there are only order of N edges. So we only have order of N edges between the partitions and all the near minimum cuts for some appropriate notion of minimum of near minimum cuts. So all approximate minimum cuts, cuts respect these partitions. So what does that mean? It means that if this is a min cut or a near min cut, then all the partitions either lie on the left of it or on the right of it. Like never, we, we never cut between, uh, cut inside of the partition. So why is that interesting? Because this basically implies that we can safely contract these partitions, then look at the uh, remaining graph, which will now be a weighted graph because what we basically do, so we contract these, right? This would be PI. And we basically look at the number of edges between PI and PJ, let's say, which is one, two, three, four. And so we basically have weight four here, here we have two, uh, one, one, etc., And now we can actually solve the minimum cut problem on this contracted graph. And we see that 
here, this cut is a minimum cut in this contracted graph and corresponds to the minimum cut of this original graph. So this is a very nice uh, bunch, of, bunch of results that we can build on. Uh, and it gives us the following quantum query algorithm, which I'll just describe in the list model. First, in step one, we construct a uh, epsilon, so this is step one, epsilon one over 10 sparsifier H. So this is the input graph G and here we have H. So we construct a sparser graph. Uh, we know that uh, if this was a near minimum, if, if this was a min cut in G, then it will be a near minimum cut in H. So what can we do in the next step? In the next step, we learn this uh, Kawarabayashi, Rubinstein, from Weinberg partition in this graph, right? And since the original minimum cut is a near minimum cut in this graph, we know that our partition should also respect that min cut. So that's what we do. Um, this is step two. And then in step three, we contract these, um, these nodes in the original graph. And we basically learn the number of edges between the different partitions. Now notice that by the result of, of um, uh, by, by the aforementioned results, there are only O and edges between them. So in total, we just have to do Grover search over the M edges of the input graph to find these sort of O N edges between the partitions here. And um, once we have that, we can just in the very last step, step four, find a uh, the minimum cut of this contracted graph. And, and it basically follows from all these considerations that the minimum cut of this graph should be a minimum cut of the original graph. And this is step four. So what can we say about the query complexity of this scheme? Step one, by our quantum sparsification algorithm takes time and query complexity until a square root mn because epsilon is constant here. Step two takes no queries, right? Because this is sort of a, an important point here. Whereas to G, we have query access. The graph H is actually given to us explicitly, right? Because that's basically the output of our uh, quantum algorithm. And so we have, we have written it down explicitly. So this step takes no queries. Then we do Grover search over the image of the original graph. So this takes um, O square root MN queries. And finally, we classically calculate the min cut of the contracted graph, uh, which again takes no queries. So the total query complexity of this scheme is O square root, O tilde square root MN. Getting the time complexity right is, is significantly more complicated because we basically have this, this step really takes a lot of time and, and, and we have to be very careful in, in trying to do this um, efficiently. So that's it. That gives us this uh, Otella square root MN quantum algorithm, uh, an upper bound on the quantum query complexity of minimum cut. And sim a similar al algorithm works in the adjacency matrix model. So I'll round up by just mentioning a couple of open questions. One is we proved this matching lower bound here for the problem of uh, constructing a sparsifier. But nobody really cares about sparsifiers. In the end, we only care about approximating the min cut or approximately solving a Laplacian system. So can we prove uh, a similar lower bound for these problems, which would prove that our approximation algorithms are, are tight? We've tried that and it, it, it seems to be uh, not quite as, as easy as we would like. Uh, the second uh, problem, which I think is maybe even more um, intriguing is unweighted graphs. So we show that this is tight for weighted graphs, but for unweighted graphs, we don't prove that this is tight actually at least I don't believe that this is tight. So I'm actually quite convinced that we can bring, bring down the query complexity down to O till n over epsilon squared for sparsification of unweighted graphs. That is in the adjacency list model. And this is optimal because that's basically the output size. And once we have that, it's not too hard. Uh, well, I mean, it's not a big step, hopefully, to then uh, try and prove that also something like unweighted min cut can be done in O till n, which would uh, solve the current gap which we have, which is uh, omega n versus Otella square root mn. So that's, uh, that's it. Uh, I'll thank you for your attention and I uh, hope everybody can uh, stay safe. Uh, thank you very much. So, um, so there were a few questions, but there's been, they have been uh, mostly answered by your co-author, Troy and Ronald. <laughs> so, that's great. Um, 
So I will ask you maybe one question about the graph specification. Your results are for the adjacency matrix. Uh, the, for the sorry, the adjacency list. What yeah. about the, the case of adjacency matrix? So, so we can always view the JCC matrix as a uh, adjacency list of a dense weighted graph, right? Where okay. basically uh, we have a complete graph, and when an edge is present, we give it weight one, and when it's not present, we give it weight zero. And in that case, the adjacency list just corresponds to the adjacency matrix model. Uh, and hence, we can simulate the adjacency matrix model and the adjacency list model, uh, where m would now be n squared. So the complexity becomes the square root mn becomes n to the three halves. So the complexity is basically n to the three halves over epsilon. Okay, so you still get uh, a speed up with respect to classical computation for some range of parameters, right? Well, we 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 actually get a strict speed up, and especially for actually we we, we get uh, so we get n to three halves over epsilon, and like I said, epsilon should actually be okay, in okay, this right. model. Yeah, it, sh okay. it should be uh, okay. not not too small, uh, and so we always get that this should be smaller than tilde m. Sorry, which would be n squared in this case. Okay, thank you. So I have the, there is another technical question. Um, uh, so from Slack. So how is the oracle from Grover's constructed from the graph oracle? The well, how is the oracle for for the Grover routine constructed from the graph oracle? Okay, yes. so I'll I'll assume that it's about uh, this step here. I think so, so, yeah. Yeah, so basically we have these partitions, right? And and for every edge, we just look at its endpoints and we check whether the endpoints are in the same partition or in different partitions. If they're in different partitions, then we, we give it value one. We want to have this edge. If they're in the same partition, we give it value zero. We don't want to have this edge. And, and then we just do Grover search with that Oracle. Okay. Thank you. So another uh, questions, uh, another question. So do, do we know what type of graph properties behave very badly with pacification? And there is an answer from Ronald, which is a number of ages. Oh, yeah, I was actually thinking this. <laughs> Very quick answer. No, yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's 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 a good question. There's there's definitely uh, things, but but I I can't uh, I can't directly give an answer. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have uh, one question. Um, so at some point uh, you mentioned uh, a gap between the time complexity and the query complexity. I think it's for the min cut uh, yes. unweighted. So why, which step uh, is not, do you know, do not know to uh, implement efficiently, time efficiently in your algorithm? Uh, so it's exactly this step of um, given a weighted graph, find the, let's say Kawarabayashi Toro partition. So okay. Kawarabayashi Toro, they, they, they prove these partition results actually for, for, for unweighted graphs. And for mm -hmm. unweighted graphs, they showed how to find this partition in near linear time. So for the input graph, we could find it in this partition in time u tilde m. But in our case, we have this graph, which has only n over epsilon squared edges, or basically u tilde n edges. Um, okay. But this one is weighted. And, 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 and it, it's not known how to construct. And I, I think it's actually a pretty interesting question, like for, for weighted graphs, to do this contraction while still preserving uh, near min cuts. And it was a little surprising that this does not seem to be known right now how to do it classically. So we prove a O tilde n to the three halves quantum algorithm for it. But my guess is that you can actually do it in O tilde n even classically. But uh, we did not manage to find an algorithm for that. OK, thank you. So I think maybe, maybe I'll just I'll just quickly come back to the, to the one question about what's sparsification, yeah. because I just thought about something. Like one problem is, is max flow. So you know that the min cuts, the min cuts is approximately preserved. So the max flow value of the sparsifier approximates the max flow value of the original graph, but the flow in the sparsifier will be a bad flow with respect to the original graph. Mm -hmm. 
um, and 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 that's kind of a um, a, a, a difficult thing that people are also struggling with in uh, in the theory. Okay, so thank you, uh, Simon. And uh, now uh, in a f the, the round table will start in a few seconds. So uh, we can uh, talk to you again, with you again uh, during this round table and to all the other speakers of the session. And there is a general announcement. So there will be another digital group photo, a photo at uh, 10.45, so after the round table. So please um, go to the meet and greet channel to see information about the, this uh, group photo. Okay, so let's enjoy the round table. So thank you. Yes, thanks.